Hello and welcome. Once again, my name is Dr. Ashibi Jacob Ineji and in this uh, lesson I will be taking you on the concept of society, culture and socialization. Please pay attention as we begin this presentation. Cheers. Alright, uh, again the course uh, title is Introduction to Sociology and course code CSS 111. Uh, well, without waste of time, let's move on straight to the topic of uh, this lesson, which is society, culture, and socialization. And so we'll be looking at uh, these three in one. All right. Okay, so what are the intended learning outcomes? Uh, what should be your uh, take home uh, after this lesson? Uh, it is expected that by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the term society, all right? And again, you should be able to list uh, and explain the types of societies. There are different types of societies. So uh, this lesson should be exposing you to that. Now, the second aspect of this lesson is culture. Uh, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to define the term culture. We are not talking about uh, the, so the social studies type of uh, definition, all right? We're talking about a more advanced type of definition of culture. And so again, you should be able to identify and explain the elements of culture, those uh, components of culture, all right? And uh, you should be able to state the significance, that's the importance of culture. Now, at the end of this lesson, again, uh, you should be able to explain, that's uh, the uh, uh, third part, the third part of um, this lesson, the concept of socialization, the concept of socialization. And finally, you should be able to explain the uh, agents of socialization. Okay. All right. Uh, so let's uh, move on straight and look into um, uh, the uh, term society. The term society. Now, uh, society has been defined uh, severally, all right, by so many persons. In summary, uh, it is not really made up of an individual, all right. It is not just made up of one individual, okay? Uh, society comprises of so many individuals in it. Again, it is made up of uh, different groups, right? Various groupings within social, uh, with social interaction, right? There are different groups that uh, interact amongst themselves. Individuals' behaviors are influenced by their group membership. Individuals' actions and actions are a reflection of the uh, membership all right by uh, way of uh, behavioral studies um, individuals behavior in the society is a reflection of their group membership uh, this actually in some returns to to mean that uh, people behave according to the group the group doctrines all right that they belong all right so let's look into what the definition of society actually is all right so what is society um society it is uh simply defined as a structured relations all right structured relations and institutions among a large community of people okay among a large community of people that means society is made up of uh so many people all right uh, a large community so uh, it comprises of different communities of people which cannot be reduced to a simple collection or aggregation of individual. Remember, we had mentioned that society is not just made up of an individual. Okay, so this is uh, a key definition of, so of, so of society. It is contained in uh, the book written by uh, Giddings and Sutton in 2017. Uh, the title is Essential Concept in Society. You can find this definition right here. All right, so uh, let's uh, move on again to see uh, a key term has been mentioned here, community, community, which is a key term. And as students of uh, sociology, you should be able to differentiate between community and society. So let's see uh, what is uh, community, what is community. Now, you can see an image, you see um, a lady right there, okay? and uh, these other people listening to her so uh, the settlement tends to be bound by the same uh, territorial uh, okay uh, boundary 
all right so a community is an organic natural kind of social group it is also a social group just like society whose members are bound together by the sense of belonging all right uh, they have the same sense of belonging created out of everyday contact covering the whole range of human activities now as they live together all right as they are bound in the same territorial area um, they live together the contact is a high possibility or probability of uh, contact all right and interaction on a daily basis all right uh, but the community but the society is just too large to have that daily interaction but within a community you are likely going to be having that daily interaction all right that's why it's a created out of everyday contact all right uh, so as they live together they interact together on a daily basis okay this definition um was is given by ferdinand stonis 1999 and is contained in his book society and community all right so having defined the term uh, community let's see the difference uh, between society and community what makes them different uh, how are they different in nature all right so we have i have put together uh, uh, the uh, differences here for society and uh, between society and community one society is much uh, is much larger than a community all right in terms of uh, uh, membership it is much larger than a community remember i had said that um, uh, society is made up of several communities all right that means community is uh, smaller than society now in uh, society there is that loose intimacy all right members in the society may not know themselves all together all right but members in the community have close intimacy so they tend to know themselves as they interact on a daily basis then uh, society in the society they do not have a common characteristics all right it's made up of different culture all right Whereas in a community, they are made up of um, a common characteristics because the sheer culture, all right, the sheer culture. All right, in a society, uh, they do not live in the same place. It has scattered all over, living in different geographical locations. Uh, but in community, they live in the same place. They are bound by different, the same geographical territory um or boundary in a in a society they have diverse authorities all right diverse authorities diverse authorities that different uh, government they are subject to different authorities but in a community they share the same government okay they share the same government um uh, difference actually exists in um a difference and conflict exists in a society all right because of that uh, diverse authorities and diverse cultural practices they have difference and conflict usually exists but in the community um, there is a uh, difference and conflict does not exist all right it's uh, even though they do this time around but it's a clear indication that uh, such community may become uh, growing uh, out of um, uh, uh, space all right so they're becoming larger uh, than what they should be so uh, <coughs> usually uh, ideally uh, the community is bound by um, uh, more bound all right than a society because than a society because they share uh, the same cultural practices so uh, conflict although they exist uh, may not be a higher scale as it is in society all right so um, a society is more abstract in nature it is abstract in nature because of its size it tends to be more abstract than to be bigger you cannot quantify uh, a society but a call a community is concrete in nature you can actually define the territorial boundary of a community you cannot easily all right identify uh, members of a community all right so that's those are the uh, differences uh, between um, a society and a community 
All right, so uh, having said that, uh, let's now move on straight into the types of societies. Uh, what are the types of societies? We have three key types of societies, although there are other types, but we're going to be looking into these three types, pre-industrial society, industrial society, and post-industrial society. That's uh, pre-industrial, before industrial society. Then we have industrial, then after industrial society. So let's take them one after the other all right so uh in the pre-industrial society uh societies it entails societies that exist before the european industrial revolution and uh, the widespread of machines all right the widespread uh, uh and use of machines all right uh, that's uh, societies that existed before that european industrial revolution the, the european industrial revolution is characterized by the widespread uh, and use of machines all right so societies that existed before that time are usually small they were mainly small societies they were rural in nature are very rural they dependent on local resources nothing like import and export they have limited production economic production and their first occupation was more of hunting you can see them in this image, this image uh, depicts the type of uh, community as at that time. You can see that um, there were more of hunters, right? There were more of hunters, uh, not in sophisticated. Everything was localized. They were small, rural in nature. All right. Okay. So now let's look at the uh, industrial industrial society uh, that's uh, during the uh, European. Uh, revolution, industrial revolution. Uh, industrial societies are the societies that evolved in the 18th century, basically the 18th and 19th century, during the dramatic rise in technological invention in Europe. That's the uh, European industrial revolution we're talking about. Okay, this type of society is characterized by highly mechanized um, equipment. All right, uh, you can see from the images more of uh, a city with so much industries. All right. Uh, increased productivity because machines were introduced and so uh, uh, jobs that were production processes that were usually done uh, manually in the pre-industrial societies were now done using the use of machine uh, using machines and so uh, the uh, rate of productivity tends to go higher uh, rise of urban centers uh, because these industries were cited in uh, places those places automatically became uh, urban centers and there was high migration from rural centers to urban centers by people in search of jobs okay it was driven by material goods the um, ultimate uh, driving force here was uh, production and of course uh, towards material goods so this society is characterized more of material goods more of production all right because industries came in uh, came up and um, the target was to produce uh, goods. Okay, let's see the post-industrial uh, societies. Uh, the post-industrial societies are, in other words, referred to information or digital societies. Okay, they are based on production of information and services. You can see uh, it is more like uh, the internet world. It is more of the internet world. You can see connectivity right here. Okay, connectivity um, where people are linked together by uh, uh, virtually and of course services are being transmitted this society is characterized by uh, is powered by digital technologies right? digital technologies it is knowledge driven it is knowledge driven and uh, in this type of society technical skill is emphasized that uh, it is uh, what you can do that guarantees your success all right so uh, now let's uh, quickly again look into the next aspect of this lecture or uh, this uh, lesson which is uh, culture culture let's see what culture is all about culture has been severally defined by different people but we have a professional definition that was given by edward b taylor edward b taylor okay uh, this is uh, his uh, picture right here edward b taylor uh, define culture as that complex whole which includes knowledge, belief, art, law, morals, customs, and any other capabilities and habits 
acquired by man as a member of the society. So for um, culture to uh, be exhibited, it must have people, all right, who belong to society. So man, as a member of society, should exhibit, all right, uh, that complex whole, which includes knowledge, belief, art, law, morals, customs, and any other cap capabilities and habits, all right, uh, within that society. In a very simple term, culture is a shared, consensual, and learned pattern of behavior. It is uh, something that is shared from one generation to another, all right? Uh, it is accepted by everybody that's consensual there. And of course, it is learned, all right, uh, by agents of socialization, okay? All right, so let's see the uh, elements of culture. What are those uh, key elements of culture? We have one here, yeah? norms, norms. Norms uh, are rules that govern behaviors. Uh, for their expected patterns of behaviors uh, so uh, every member of society is familiar with norms and this is what guides their behavior in the society then belief belief is more of religious it has to do with uh, that religious beliefs uh, things that individuals hold to be true okay uh, belief simply means things that individuals of a society or a community hold to be true okay so we have different types of religion um, those things that those people believe uh, or the whole to be true is what they call is what is them belief. Now, technology is, uh, simply uh, entails the material good, the material good of culture. So, whatever is uh, is uh, seen as the uh, materially good in every culture is the technology of that culture, and it is a key component of uh, culture. Now symbols and language, all right, they are com they convert shared recognizable meanings. Language is used for communicating and transmitting of culture. So uh, language symbols they are key elements of culture because uh, they are instruments that are used in transmitting and com communicating culture from one generation to another. As you can see here, we have uh, different symbols here. In fact, the world has a lot of logos and uh, symbols. Uh, those have their meanings all right um, let's uh, see the importance of culture how important is uh, culture uh, culture has several importance but we're just going to take this view it's uh, sets behavioral standards all right uh, through culture uh, and through norms of a particular culture we know how to behave define the structure of relationship it is culture that tells us um, who we are and who we ought to behave with and, uh, or not all right uh, so culture sets that structure of relationship it defines societal values as it is true culture that we know our material goods we know those things that are technically good uh, those things that are of value to us uh, culture defines what is held to be true and this is term belief all right it defines what we should believe in it conveys a sense of identity through culture we know who we are all right um, you can easily predict uh, who someone is by virtue of their culture it enhances the stability of the social system yes uh, culture binds us together all right uh, once we share a common cultural belief or practice uh, we tend to be bound together all right uh, so let's move on uh, to the next uh, the final aspect of this lesson which is socialization socialization or before that you need to take this class activity okay so i'll just pause the video for you to uh, jot down uh, these questions and attempt them yourself based on what we have just discussed Right, so I believe that uh, with that pause, you have been able to uh, uh, jot down these questions, attempt them religiously, and ensure that you are able to do all of them. Right, so let's look at socialization. Uh, socialization. What is socialization? Uh, socialization is an interactional process. This is a key word. It's an interactional process in which an individual's behavior and attitude are modified to conform with the members' expectation of the group.
to which he or she belongs so it is true socialization that culture all right this um uh conformity to members expectation of a group is all about culture right uh it is true socialization that individuals get to know the culture simply put it is the process of internalizing the norms and ideologies of society so culture is a process of getting used to the norms and ideology of society so uh, sorry socialization is the process of getting used to the norms and ideologies of society um let's now see the agents of socialization who are those uh, that actually facilitate uh, socialization one is the family this is um, recognized as the significant order it is the first point of socialization for every human being the family uh, begins to that's where we learn the first point uh, after tabula rasa that is the first point that we begin to learn uh, what is obtainable in society then peers all right our peers our peer groups also influences us by uh, exposing us to some societal um, norms and values okay uh, schools television churches all of these uh, will learn what is obtainable in the society through this mosque all right uh, the mass media and the new media uh, social media uh, comes in there all of these are key agents of socialization all right so let's take uh, the class activity two before we uh, wrap up with this lesson uh, class activity to uh, define the term socialization list and explain the different agents of socialization we just there to that but you can on your own now practice and ensure you know all of this so the video is paused again to ensure that you get the question All right, thank you for uh, watching this video till the end. Uh, I hope you got everything. Otherwise, you will have to send your questions uh, to me, and I will be able to. I will be very happy to respond to them. Enjoy the rest of your time. Bye bye.